Hello everyone, this is Rebecca from Papa Trader Schwa and welcome to File Folder Friday. Uh, we've got kind of a simple little um, pocket. Uh, it's almost a, um, a take on a manila folder, almost. Um, um, it has one pocket, one single pocket inside here. And then um, I had these little pockets that I made probably a year ago and I thought you know what I can put that right on the back so I put one on the back that already had some little ephemera in it glued a number on it and um, for um, for the back now my idea is that this would be a free floating pocket and that even though this is the front it would be put into a journal like this, so this would what would be showing. So I put more of the. That's why I put this pocket on this side, um, even though this is decorative and this does shut. And you know this can be pushed all the way in, and this can shut, and it can go in this way. Um, the choice is yours um, as to um, which side you want to put pockets on and how you want to use it. Um, now what I have to adhere to the file folder is this is a um, scrunch down newspaper if scrunch is a word I guess scrunch is a word actually um, this is a um, one sheet or one page rather from um, a newspaper from 1876 I think it was and so I shrunk it down and printed it on an eight and a half by eleven. And of course I've sprayed it with coffee and tea. Um, but that's what I used um, to adhere to the front and back and to the little label, even though I missed that circle completely. And then I just folded, since it was just thin writing paper, I just folded it and um, just made uh, writing uh, little writing cards out of the remainder. But what I also did was I made this a digital download that you can get free off my Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, coffees are not necessary to, uh, to buy, but if you want to use this in either making this project or any other, you can download this uh, sheet as an 85 by 11 um, for whatever you want to use it for. The one thing that I would recommend is if you want it to print, um, it's hard to see on this, but it's got like a quarter edge. You can have your printer on a uh, fit to the page, but if you want it as big as possible, uh, use a half inch um, margins all the way around, and you should get the same thing. Um, but uh, at any rate, um, this is a free printable on the Buy Me a Coffee, and um, what I've decided to do is um, when I do have and do use printables uh, in any of my projects, um, I'll end up putting some of them on the Buy Me a Coffee, and when I do, I'll let you know, and you can go there and download it. So, without further ado, um, let me get my materials together, and we'll get started on this little project. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is take your file folder while it's still folded and cut it at four inches that is if you want to make one the exact same size as this if you want to make a different size just follow the same principles um, with your width plus a half an inch and then your height plus a half an inch for the bottom and yeah I do have it the right way and an inch for the top so um, depending on what size you want it just a half inch on the side half inch on the bottom and one inch on the top 
Okay, but I'm going to make one the same size that I made. So I'm starting out with cutting both layers at four inches. I'll put that aside. And what this does is it um, has one of the side folds. Actually, I'll turn it this way because I want this to be on the back. But you already have a side fold, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I want this to be my front, so this is the one I want to have the extra half inch. So what I want to do now is come back in and put the... Let me get down here because I don't think I was in shot there. Um, you want to put... Well, you know what? I'm going to cut just a little bit off the bottom here. So that I can actually get this so you can see it. So put the fold line at three and a half on this uh, wrinkled side. So you can see my fold line is right there. And just go up, um, making sure. Now, if you have a trimmer that has the lines all the way across or all the way up, that, you know, is wonderful. Let's see if my pencil will mark on this. Oh, looky there. All right. So, I suppose I could have done it at the bottom just as well, but, okay. Good enough. So, we're going to take off half an inch off of that back side. And then we're going to cut it. Oh, I don't know how I'm putting that away. So, this is five and a half inches long. So, an extra half inch makes it six, and then another full inch makes it seven. So, I need a card now that is seven inches long in total. So, I'm going to come down here to the seven. Cut that, and then the next thing we'll need is the um, scoreboard. Okay, so on this front side, we want to score at the half inch mark here. And I like to do two scores on this heavier paper. And then we're going to turn it around. And it doesn't matter which way you do it. You can score uh, either end. But at one end you score one inch. The other end you score half an inch. So I'm going to make this one my half inch. Through here. And I'm going to make this one my full inch. Okay, now, when we fold it, everything should line up. Let me, uh, okay, so this is going to be cut um, this is going to be cut this is going to be cut and mitered, so you'd want to do that. And then this one is going to be cut. And actually this would, this one is, you're going to make a, a circle. And I don't have um, a punch, obviously, that big, or a, not a punch, but a corner rounder type thing. So what I did on this one was I used the circle of a roll of of ribbon so you can see it pretty much lines up right there and I got two sizes um, just in case I needed this one because I wasn't sure what size I was going to make but this will be the one I use okay so um, I'm just going to cut these now you want to cut on the outside of your score line so that when you cut cut it, your score line comes off with what you cut. And I like to cut and then come back and do my mitering. 
um, so cut to just across the score line and cut out the score line completely and I can't I can see the lines but not as good as I would like to okay okay and then this one so now on the one that I did first I uh, tea stained it and put a little coffee stain on it but I'm not going to do this one um, mainly for time's sake but I will be inking my edges okay so to do my little mitered edges I'm going to trade scissors just do that there I'm going to do these slightly here okay now I know I'm done with the scoreboard, but I'm, uh, this has got a hump in it. See, I paid 50 cents for that ribbon. <laughs> um, so when you use, whether it's a can lid, jar lid, or whatever that you use, what you want to do is you want to line up where the circle meets the, the, the corner. But you also want to line up so that it's almost flush with the top. And when you've done that, you know that everything is right where it's supposed to be. Then just draw you a line around. And there you have as close as a good circle as you could possibly get under the circumstances. So then, just very carefully cut now I'm sure that there's a a punch or a cutter or something out there that that will cut that in fact I do have a circle cutter but um, I think it's actually for quilting I've never used it um, I picked it up at a thrift store for like a dollar but like I said, I've never used it, never even tried it on paper. Okay, let me put this aside. So, we're going to now turn everything uh, in to make sure everything is lining up the way that it's supposed to. Now, the main one is this, this one right here. You want to make sure that your side is flush with or just slightly behind the actual fold line. You don't want it coming past it. So that looks good. So I'm going to put down this glue. I think I've done a pocket, if not like this, at least similar to this on a project way back in the late summer when I kind of first started doing like real videos. <laughs> quote unquote on the real. Uh, I did a seed packet, but I don't know if I did it like this exactly. I don't remember. Um, but I might link that video for anyone who wants to make a, a seed packet. Okay. So, there's that. Like that. And then that folds over that way really well and there is just a slight I mean it's very slight neg negligible almost but hey I got it when you ink it you won't be able to see it move that little thing okay alrighty now let's glue this one you know what before I glue before you glue the bottom, if you want to ink, let me fill up my little ink thing. It's been a few 
few days since I've used it, so it's a little, a little dry, just a little bit. Now, now it's way too wet because I didn't just give it a drop. I sort of saturated. Anyway, before you glue this up, if you want to ink, ink that before you do that. Otherwise, it will be very difficult, if not impossible to uh, ink that. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and run the uh, this little thing all the way around what's exposed here and just go ahead and get that part done. Like so. And I know one thing I did forget to do too, that I think I can still do, is I forgot to put my thumb notch in. Uh, yeah. And I made a mess out of that, but it'll be alright. We can move with it. And I probably should get over this way. Okay. So it's three and a half inches wide, which makes the middle one and three quarters. So I can bubble that up just a little bit. I got marks here where um, I sort of run this uh, the edges down to, and so I get those lined up, and then I move it to where it looks like the middle to me, and then. Uh, do that. And because I haven't totally um, glued everything, I can still come in and ink that little thumb knot. Glue it a little bit so it'll dry. Okay, now let's go back where we started. And I like to glue just above where that fold line is going to be and just kind of glue the whole thing down. And now this is um, heavy paper. So I am going to uh, drag out the iron. I've had a lot of people ask me. Well, not a lot. Maybe three or four people ask me about why I iron. And, and I know I've explained it with, I'm doing heavy paper. I want the glue to set so I can keep going, etc. And that is absolutely true. The other thing, though, that I thought about after I wrote some of those answers was, I come from a sewing background. And when you sew, you iron everything. Every time you uh, sew stitches, you you know, you iron them open or you, you iron them in some way, shape, or form. If you're doing darts, you iron the dart. If you're sewing zippers, you then you iron the seam. So I think that I have carried that over from my sewing, thinking that I have to have an iron to do paper. Uh, technically, I know that I don't, but I, I can't. It's almost like I can't not do it. Uh, it's the link in my brain between paper and sewing. I don't know. It's just a theory. But anyway, I might have actually s s stood here and pressed this while I run my mouth so that I might not actually need it this time around. Okay. Well, that, I think that'll be all right. Um, let's put a little bit of ink across through here. And here. And I guess we'll call that inked. Okay, now one of the reasons that I made this five and a half is because half of 11 is five and a half. <laughs> and what that let me do is use half the paper for the envelope and half the paper for um, stuff to fold up and put inside of it. Um, so, what did I do? Oh, here it is. Lost my paper trimmer. 
So what I'm going to do now on my first one, I um, used my decal edge trimmer, the We Are Memory Keepers, with the dial at the top, and that there, there was someone who asked me about where did um, not where did I get mine, but they wanted one like it, and I got mine at Hobby Lobby when it was on clearance when they weren't going to carry them anymore, but. I did answer her back that they do sell them on Amazon, at least the USA Amazon. They do sell them, and I put a link in the in the um, answer uh, reply section of her comment. So if you're watching this video and you haven't seen that comment, go and click that link because it will take you to Amazon where you can buy it. Um, it's exactly the same. It's just I think it's been updated. You know. It's a little newer, um, a little more uh, refined design, uh, but it's exactly the same. It's still, we are memory keepers. Everything is the same about it. So, um, I keep trying to put this away for some reason. Now, on this one, I put the horse and buggy on the front, and I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. So... And I think it's fine to leave that border if I'm going to do square edges anyway. So, but I do want to come down slightly. So I know it's three and a half inches across and I want to have a slight border. I'm thinking. I guess I actually should cut the border off because I do want it to be smaller and I'd rather cut the border off than cut words off. So I'm going to... Um, guesstimate where the line is for this little bitty border at the top. Oops. And I guess my blade's getting dull, especially after cutting this um, uh, file folder double thickness on top of that. So we're not going to use that side. Well, we could because if it's roughed up a little bit, that's not going to hurt, is it? No, it's not. So, we're going to do that. Okay, now, alright, so three and a half is the full width. We want roughly an eighth of an inch all the way around. Um, so, um, I might end up having to cut just a touch off the bottom anyway. Anyway, let me get on with the program. So, I'm going to um, cut this at three and a quarter, which puts it almost on that line. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on that line. It'll be a little narrower, but I'd rather have it right between the advertisements instead of cutting one of them in two. So, let's see how that's going to look. Well, that's not bad. That works just fine. Okay, let me put just a little bit of ink around it and hopefully it won't saturate it too much. So basically what you want to do is cut a piece for the front with whatever size border that you want to use. Um, you also want to cut a piece for the back. Now what I did on my back was I did cut a separate piece for this little bitty piece, just a little bitty strip, but then I ended up putting um, the pocket over it and you can even see it. So I am not going to do that on this one. I'm going to make a pocket that comes... Um, or not a pocket, but a cover that comes down and make it just slightly smaller, put a hole punch in it, um, and then put that pocket. I have another one similar to this I'm going to put on it. So, um, so I'm going to take this to the iron, though, because it is a little bit saturated, and I will be right back. Okay, so I got this dry, and so I'm going to just run some glue stick over the back uh, and then stick my finger in the glue stick, my goodness. <laughs> 
Did you see the last video where I was just talking away and I heard the noise and I stopped? <laughs> and it wasn't until I was listening to the video when I was editing it that I realized what the noise was where I brought my bulldog clips down and I'd just been reaching in the basket and digging one out. And just as I started to talk, they settled in the basket and I thought it was my camera. And so, uh, made me feel like such an idiot. But anyway, all right. Now, I have been having a little bit of problem with this um, glue stick. Um, it it adheres okay, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra glue around this edge and just give myself a little bit of extra in here because for some reason the last couple of times I've used it it looks like it's covered well and then something will pop pop up and uh, I don't want that to happen so put that there Just a little bit. This one looks like it needs to come up a little more. Does that look straight-ish, sort of? Okay. Now, you know what I'm about to say. I'm going to go iron this thing. <laughs> Okay, now, let's see, which one do we want here? I think I want this one as something to go on the inside, but what did I, didn't I have, yeah, she's right in the middle, well, I say she, it's a cape looks like, right in the middle here, so, that would actually still be using the same one. So I guess we'll put this one on the back. So I'm going to put my lid on the glue stick and I'm going to cut right down between hygienic flour, didn't know there was such a thing, or maybe we use different terminology these days, um, and the merchant tailor, and spring style silk hats, hats, and eggles, eggles, eddies, anyway, some brother upholsters. I got on my reading glasses, and it's just a little too far away for me to see it. Um, and it not be just slightly blurry. Okay, so we're gonna put that aside. We're gonna put this in the back. We're gonna throw it around. Okay, that that will work and still give me a border. Okay. Alrighty, well, let me just kinda move that for a second. Get my pencil, my ruler, and okay, so the middle is going to be one and five eighths, which is there. That mark might be just a touch too dark but it don't matter it's going to be get, getting cut out so so line up my little marks put that one in the middle as close as possible and you know I actually had this happen the other day so come out of there and let me show you what I did to fix it let's see if this is 
perfect. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to line this up on the back like so. I don't want to mess up a big piece to cut this little thing, so I'm hoping that this will work. All right, so. So I've got a piece of paper lined up under it, with something kind of heavy. Put it back in and line it back up where I had it. It still didn't want to cut. And most of that, or maybe all of that, is because um, it's coffee stained and it might actually still be a touch damp. Maybe. I mean, as many times as I pass the iron over it, you'd think it'd be dry, but it might not be. But anyway, it's fixed now. So, I left too many papers in my own way. So, at least this one, though, I'm remembering to ink it <laughs> before I do anything else with it. Oh, wait, you know what else i got to do? I've got to I'm gonna cut it right here okay I've got to cut that to that little bottom off because this part of the pocket is shorter Let's carry on. All right. I like when it is juicy like that because it makes it bleed a little into it. I like that look. Okay. Now let me dry it. All right. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm holding this like this to find where I glued the last time so I don't get glue on the front. And I absolutely despise this purple glue. I will never buy it ever, ever, ever again. And had I been paying attention, I probably would not have bought it in the first place. But you live, you learn. Okay, well I just run down to the thing. It's uh, scrubbing the paper, so let me grab another one. Alright. It starts out really good, but when it's getting, once you've taken off that little top, it's horrible. I don't like it at all. It's gunky and gummy and Oh well, that's enough of that. All right. Now let me put just a little extra around through there and across there. Well, I don't know if anything actually came out on those. Yeah, I just don't want this to bubble up. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit more right in here. Once it starts turning clear, it's hard to tell where you've put it, but um, I would rather battle regular glue than try to figure out the purple stuff. Okay. This one is a little bit off. That looks a little better, but this one needs to be straightened up now. Okay. I think it's about as even as I can make it. Okay, we gotta iron it down. <laughs> oh. 
Alrighty. Now, let's find. This is the um, little pocket I've got, and I'm just gonna. You know what? I made. I didn't cut this one, so it's not as wide. Give me one sec. That's the same, but this one I believe is wider. Well, I hate to cover up that much, but that pocket fits better. Barely, but it does. And I've got some tags, I think, in this one. From... I bet I made these four years ago. Um, and these are pre-made envelopes that I glued the little tab down. Which actually gave me the idea for the envelopes. I have two of them. Okay, I'm going to use this one. I am, I am. And so just some glue along the sides. And glue along the bottom. My goodness, that's a straight line. I grew up in the mountains of North Carolina where the curves go around and around and around and and uh, when I was growing up the joke was that you meet yourself coming back because so the curves are so curvy and then um, when I got older and could use language that I wasn't allowed to use at home it was called a kiss your you know grits or behind the curves <laughs> You know, a word that rhymes with grass uh, to mean the same thing, of course. But uh, but the one that is has been tried and true for many years for those people who know what driving in the mountains is like, um, they always ask the question: Is the person who made these roads did they were they following a black snake? <laughs> well, that's what that reminded me of just now. Okay, I'm going to press it. Okie dokie. So there's those. I'm not going to put a string in those. Um, I will after the camera's off, but I'm not going to do it as part of the video. Alright. Now... I need to make the this little part and I'm going to use what am I going to use I wonder how I wonder if I can use this Put this, um, it's gonna. I think I can still work around it. I'm going to try to get that in the middle. It's gonna be very close. But we're gonna try. I know it's gonna en not end up in the exact middle. a chance and call that a 
wand that we can use. Come up across through here. Follow this line. Cream suet butter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, now let's see what we've got. Okay. I am going to call that close enough. <laughs> And you know what? I did it upside down. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. I did do it upside down. Because the idea is that when you close it, it's supposed to be right side up. Rebecca. Okay. Well, we know that works. So, we're going to change this to... Uh, Groceries and provisions, maybe, or a double house, double house and removal. I don't, I really want groceries. It might not be exactly in the middle, but it will be close. All right, so note to self and anyone else who uh, might do the same thing when you make your covering for your little flap and you're using directional paper make sure you do it upside down <laughs> We've got, well, when I say we, I don't mean we like here in town, but it's a little wide place in the road, about 30 minutes or so up the road. And um, it's this little country store, but they have a, a, a little restaurant, and they don't have it inside. They have a big, it's... <laughs> For all intents and purposes, it's a covered porch. It's open on two sides, on the, like a corner, with a wooden floor, and then it's got a roof, but the back two sides have walls. So it's like they've taken a little building and taken two walls out of it. Um, and it's called Grits and Groceries. And all they serve is breakfast and lunch, I think. And it's just like, breakfast is like, you know, eggs and toast and pancakes and maybe some meats or like bacon and chicken maybe I'm not sure but uh, we've never eaten there it's every time we go through there going someplace it's always closed but um, but anyway uh, on the outside they've got this humongous chicken it's a big old rooster and I mean it, the little town, or it's not even a town, I'm serious, it's a wide place in the road, it's where two roads crisscross, and it's called Sailor's Crossroad, not Sailor like Ocean, but S-A-Y-L-O-R, like Taylor, but Sailor, it's called Sailor's Crossroad, if you're in the U.S. and you have access to Google Maps, go find this in South Carolina, it's in, I want to say it's in Abbeville County, Anyway, it's, uh, and it's on the highway number, I think it's 185. Anyway, this chicken is about 8, 9, maybe 10 feet tall. It's huge. And uh, 
it's just so funny. I, I keep wanting to stop and take pictures of it. Of course, I haven't done that yet. Okay, I'm going to iron this and quit talking. Okay. My goodness. So, yeah, when I go to visit my parents in North Carolina, I always go that little road. and right, It's not a little road. It's just back roads. And, uh, and I always want to stop and take pictures of the chicken. But I just, I have never done it yet. It's a rooster. It's not even a chicken. It's a, ro a rooster. Where I come from, very, very few people say hens. They say chicken. It's a chicken and a rooster, <laughs> not a hen and a rooster. But anyway. All right. Now, let's see if I can. Yeah, that's what brought groceries and provisions instead of grits and groceries. I think I did the same thing I did on the other one, which was cut it just a little bit too narrow on one side and not quite enough on the other, but it'll be all right. Okay, let's put a decoration or two on it. Um, as soon as my glue comes out. So yeah, um, so this is the last project of 2023. I have a whole bunch of what I hope is really good stuff lined up for the next few weeks. And um, I'm, I'm going to be challenging myself and I might be challenging some of you too. And But it's how we learn and grow, isn't it? It's... Uh, it's, uh, um, what's the word, um, pushing our envelopes in a good way, that is. Um, now let me do this one. Down like this. jumping out. Now this one, I'll link the video for this. This was a Monograph Monday project. Um, my Monograph Mondays and my Wallpaper Wednesdays and the uh, Thematic Thursdays after this video or after the first of the year, I suppose, um, will all be found under the playlist called Retired Playlist. They'll still be called Monograph Monday, etc. But they will be in another playlist because I'm changing Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Also, something that I did today was um, I added uh, tickets to Tuesday's projects. So, um, Tag Along Tuesday is now called Tickety Tag Tuesday. <laughs> I thought long and hard on that one. I looked up tickety and realized it was a a little bit of a part of a British slang and I thought, well, that's owed to my husband. My husband's from the UK. So uh, I haven't told him yet, but he'd he just roll his eyes at me, I'm sure. <laughs> um, on the last day of the month, um, the drawing will be officially closed at at midnight on the 31st, my time, um, which is Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. And uh, just depending on what's going on with the first, um, the drawing will ha either happen on the first or the second. I'm not sure yet exactly when, but as soon as it happens, I'll be doing the video on it. I'll be writing out all of the names. My husband will be doing the drawing like he did last time. And then um, the winners will be um, send me uh, by email their address and I'll get their packages in the mail. 
All right, let me press this, get the edges dry. That will be a, a writing card on the inside. I butchered this one, but I think I can save a little something. And I should... Well, I don't guess I should have another one because this was it that I butchered, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to fold this in half. Put just a tiny little mark along that fold. Just enough to give it some definition. That's going to go in there. Oh, I guess one thing we could do is see, that's how it's supposed to look. Okay. So, there's that. Clean this up. And well, hey, look at that. I might actually be able to salvage a little bit of this. Well, until I dug into it. Yeah, I've been cutting way too much file folders with that blade. I need to change it out. I do have an extra one. So that's a must if I'm going to keep on doing heavy paper and then doing this little... This is just cop regular copy paper. I think maybe 20 pounds. So, uh, yeah. It's, like, it's saying, choose one or the other. Quit messing with me. We are almost at the end. And I will be doing a project. When will that be? I think it's next week, but I might be mistaken. It might be the week after. But at any rate, I will be having another free digital in the Buy Me a Coffee when. Uh, yeah, I do believe that it's not this coming week, but the week after. But anyway, um, I'll have another uh, freebie. Alrighty, let me dry these. Well, I'm going to put this behind and just not put it in all the way. Let's see about that one. That one can go in... Here. Pull that out slightly. Okay. Well, that's it. And again, I'm not doing anything to the front because I'm doing it as a floating pocket that would be put in a journal this way, probably in another pocket. So that's how I'm uh, viewing this. But. Let me clean up my station. We'll look at um, uh, the two that we've made. Um, oh, look. Hey, I can use that, too. I'll ink that up and put that in. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we've made a couple of little file folder pockets. Um, the one that I looked at that I kind of patterned this after was actually a tall... Uh, more a little more skinny but I let the um, the print that I did determine the size of, uh, of the, this pocket but you can make it uh, you know within reason as tall or as wide as you want it to be um, whatever works for what your project is but um, but anyway that's it now both of these will go into the to the drawing um, so, um, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in another video in a few days.